I made two videos in the past <coughs> uh, with which I wanted to make a circuit and also showed a test circuit to uh, measure high inductance coils. So the higher ones. So not the radio coils. This is a high, more or less a high inductance coil. This is a typical radio coil. And this is also a quite high inductance coil. It must be somewhere in the milli Henry range. And this one is in the micro Henry range. Anyway, uh, I wanted to make a circuit. They were not very successful. But uh, I got a very good idea from uh, one of my followers on YouTube, that's Jim. And he told me that there was a video where they calculated the uh, inductive reactance in this way. And that was very, very interesting. So here we have a resistor and an unknown coil, a frequency generator that has to have, of course, a certain output. Parallel to each element in this circuit, there is an AC voltmeter. And um, when you change the frequency on a certain moment, there is a kind of equilibrium when both AC voltmeters show the same uh, voltage, you can uh, do a calculation. <coughs> and they told in this video, I will give the, the, the link in the text box, cutoff frequency. Uh, anyway, it has of course to do with uh, resistance and um, inductance. Induct inductive reactance, of course. Anyway, it doesn't matter, but uh, I, I did a first experiment and it worked properly. So you can calculate the um, inductance, the inductive reactance, to be precise, via this formula. And 2p means 6.2831. So not P multiplied by P. That was at first my idea, but I googled it in any way. I'm not a hero in mathematics and uh, when you do this calculation it works. And in the video that's on YouTube, he found uh, this frequency and this resistance for the resistance in the test circuit and then he'll cal he calculated 1.2 milli henry so that's very interesting so my idea was to do that uh, to use that principle to test and find coils with higher inductances like the these ones Anyway, pen over somewhat to show the formula, formula that uh, this man used in, in this calculation. So you can take profit of it. Uh, but the second idea was of course that I needed an amplifier that could amplify sine waves from, say, this generator, of which the maximum output is 500 milli, sorry, one, mi, one volt. Uh, and of course, when you want to do such a test with a coil, you need, perhaps, I'm not sure at this moment, but anyway, a more output voltage of the generator. So, I've made a kind of amplifier to amplify the signal of this sine wave generator to a usable value 
and that is in my opinion approximately 15 volts or so. And that's what I made here. And here is the circuit. I hope it's visible from this distance. I cannot see it very clearly on my uh, screen of the camera, but anyway, I want to get somewhat closer. The, the most important information is here. I did uh, many experiments before I got to this circuit that looks quite basic and quite simple. But there is something to tell. The working point is set here with this the bias or the working point with the one mega ohm potentiometer. The output is variable. I used here two resistors uh, to do the measurements. And I found that the change of the diodes didn't uh, have much effect. Also the value of this resistor changing the value of that resistor didn't have much effect. By the way, the minimum value is 470 ohms. I used three diodes, didn't have any effect, but there were effects. And especially here in these two resistors, when you make them too low, uh, the circuit gets kind of unstable could have to do with my power supply, by the way. This power supply, there's a video on my YouTube channel about this power supply, uh, is perhaps not very properly smoothed out. So that could have an effect. Anyway, the circuit is on YouTube, so you can decide for yourself. Uh, the circuit works on say 50 volts, the output is uh, between say 15 volts, uh, according of course to the load. And that's here 680 ohms or 200 ohms. This is by the way very interesting. You can correct the waveform somewhat by backcoupling and do that here via this say small capacitor. I've used here 220 picofarad. That's a very small value. You can also use 100 picofarad or 500 picofarad. And you will surely see that the waveform changes when you um, use that capacitor. I want to demonstrate that. Take my scissor here and disconnect the capacitor. There is not much effect, but when you study that on higher frequencies, you will surely see an effect. And I have done three tests at first at 70 Hz with this amplifier, 70 Hz, 700 Hz, and say 7000 Hz, or in, in my test uh, 10000 Hz. And you can see that this waveform is not very, very pure, but you can um, say align that a little bit by this potentiometer here of one mega ohm, and it's this one in the circuit. One mega ohm. When you align it, you can align the pureness of the waveform. You can also do experiments. Use here, for instance. Uh, 10 ohm resistor bridged with a 470 microfarad capacitor 
in the emitter lead that shows some effect on certain frequencies and that's logic. I've explained that earlier in other videos anyway, but I found that uh, connecting the emitter directly, purely to ground give, uh, has given the best results in amplification. So I want to show the, the bias of that one mega ohm potentiometer. And you can see that you can change the waveform a lot. And for measurement applications, to measure these uh, high inductance coils, my opinion is at first sight that the waveform uh, does not have to be very, very pure. I don't know exactly what the effect will be of distortion in the waveform on the measurement results, but anyway, I think this waveform is good enough for such a measurement circuit. So here are the, and when I, when I say measurement circuit, I mean this circuit. With a square wave, my opinion is that you will have uh, perhaps strange results. I don't know that exactly. I have to test that. But anyway, a square wave had an, has another, say, energy inside. And also harmonics. The sine wave is, in my opinion, the best generator to do this test. Here are my measurement results In general, it gives out uh, 15 volts over the resistor and the test. That's the 200 ohms resistor and the uh, six, uh, 600 ohm resistor, 680 ohms. That's what it is. Supply voltage is constantly on this circuit here from this power supply uh, approximately 50 volts uh, of course that can change somewhat due to the load on the generator but anyway and um, well let's look at the measurement results of course when the resistor uh, gets uh, smaller the output voltage, AC output voltage of the generator drops somewhat. But uh, I didn't test it with very low um, resistors at the output perhaps in that measuring circuit. Could be that you need a generator, sine wave generator that is able to generate, say, 4 volts or 10 volts over a very low uh, resistive and inductive load. But anyway, that will be the first, uh, sorry, the second step in this project. Wish you luck. And here are my uh, ideas about the pure sine wave and a good sine wave. The good sine wave is this, the pure sine wave is this, and this is in my opinion the good sine wave. <laughs>